The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gapfest Radio, the radio you can see. <laughs> And good evening and welcome everyone to Scarefest Television. And our guest tonight, by the way, is Tiffany Shep. It's not Scott Tepperman, despite the glitch on the on the label. See, there she is. There she is. Right there. Uh, that's Proof the only of reason concept. I was here was for Scott Tepperman. I, w- <laughs> I was I was so excited that I just with all these beautiful women around me, because CC Ann tonight is my co-host, everybody. And now you can come back to me. You don't have to show Tiffany all the time. Okay. Yeah, I do. Uh, you okay. Um <laughs> Welcome to Scarefest Television. The original broadcast date is June 18th, 2021, and we are graced tonight with the presence of Tiffany Sheppis, one of our all-time favorite guests, because she knows every button to push to torture me. Um, this That's just the only way, that's the only way uh, we can put it. Now, everybody stick around, 30-minute mark. We got a celebrity announcement to drop, and it's one that you've been asking for on and off, um, popular, popular guy. Um, Is it Scott Tepperman? No, okay, no, okay. Let me explain, Tiffany, because Scott Tepperman, I can't believe you even know who the fuck he is. <laughs> we uh, we dro- we drop the f bomb once a show at least, by the way, so that YouTube doesn't uh, monetize well, our I, channel. I am leaving because I don't talk <laughs> that way. Block and delete. <laughs> Um, Scott is coming. Uh, yeah, we, we booked Scott. Uh, he's coming and he's, um, he's got to upload. He's going to have uh, his latest film in our film festival. Uh, so he's, he's, um, written, directed, produced. I don't, he, well, what he, else he, is Scott Tepperman up to? Let's just make this the Scott Tepperman <laughs> double feature hour, uh, on Scarefest TV. All, as far as I know, that's about all All he's done for the last year. It just, you know, uh, COVID locked him in the house and he made a movie. Um, which a uh, lot of people didn't. I'll, <laughs> I'll say, a lot of people did. I got the, uh, I want the first person that decided to do the, the Zoom meeting horror movie. God bless him. The other 50 or 100, little derivative, everybody. Little derivative. Just saying it. Um, well, it's only well, hard now because now we're getting to the point where we're not going to have to do everything on Zoom, so it's just going to seem a little bit dated after <laughs> this, I think. You know, it's like, uh, we don't do that anymore, guys. <laughs> that See, that's actually something as conventions we're up against. We were planning on, originally, before COVID, streaming and having our live convention. Okay? Make it a just a, a multimedia event. And now... The interest in us streaming the event, people's like, yeah, you know, just we've watched, I mean, we've watched it. I don't know if that's true because, I mean, I did a lot of online conventions during COVID, and they were packed, and so many people were like, "This is actually awesome" because I live in like Saskatchewan or wherever the fuck. <laughs> And they're like, I can't make it to a convention, so this is amazing that I get to do this. And like, they would do like private, like not chat rooms, but I guess like meet and greets with people. Right. And uh, and I don't know. I think that kind of stuff may actually stick around. So <laughs> see, I to think it, Wes. I only know of one convention that pulled it off successfully, and they're still doing it. I mean, it's no big secret, and it's one of my favorite conventions. So I'll name them anyway. GalaxyCon. They've done it right. Although I do think their podcast was only because I had their people on my show and then they thought it was a great idea. That being said. The world did it and it was, it's been huge. Who did? Wizard World. Let's see, they're more of a Comic-Con, aren't they? 
well, I don't know. I mean, I don't make a bunch of comics, <laughs> and I was there, and they did a hatchet <laughs> panel, and they did a scream. The point panel, is, the broader the fan base. The point plus, is, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I I seed your point. By the way, everybody, this is Tiffany Shepis, who literally wanted to beat my ass at the last Airfest convention. And will continue this year. <laughs> and why would she want to do that, Wes? Because I was a bearer of of of. Uh, they were wanting her. They don't. We'd already had her away from her table to do a panel, and then they said, "Oh, by the way, all the uh, Tiffany and I think it was Felissa. Tell them they need to be out in the middle for uh, trivia." And I said, "Wait, you want me to tell them that I have to tell them that they're okay? I'll tell." Them. And if looks could kill, I would not be her hosting this show tonight. I would just say, put that out there. <laughs> this I, year. I, in fairness, I actually don't even remember that, <laughs> but I, it, it sounds very accurate. Like, you know, when, like, as much as, like, you know, you want it, like, I love doing panels. Like, I absolutely love them. But then you do realize not everybody wants to sit on your panel. And so then you're gone for an hour, hour and a half or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you get back to it and someone's like, Oh no, you got to go do jeopardy. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, so I, so I, I imagine my response to you, but I don't actually remember that conversation. Okay. <laughs> so um, maybe it was <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's Felissa Rose. <laughs> no, no, no. Felissa, Felissa was sweet to me. I remember she was much, much sweeter than you were. Um, well, I, that's true. In life. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know where I'm going after that. Now, it, I will say one thing this year. We're more cognizant of keeping the celebrities away from the table this year. We're going to be much more careful about that, just so you know. So you can you can just bring you a good pillow and sit down and enjoy the weekend, and we won't bother you. I think we'll just bring our table with us places like uh, <laughs> like old like cigarette girls, you know, just like a little pop up table. It's like, all right, yeah, whatever, man. Like, you want me to be here? I'll sign autographs here. No big deal. Um, you know, we got to improvise, Wes. Cece, what do you think? I think you should get one. Go ahead and switch over. Novelties, party favors. Yes. <laughs> I could definitely. I could be a total carny, and I could start like like doing like raffles and shit, like. This is a great idea. Cece? I think it's a great idea. I think you just need to keep rolling with this. Yeah. Now, I think you're right. I was just telling Wes before you came on that if you have seen a, a horror film, you have seen Tiffany Shepis uh, on <laughs> screen. Absolutely. You have been in so many films, honey. Ugh. Yes. You're very versatile. Is horror one of your favorite genres, or do you, is there something you prefer? No, I mean, well, it's always been my favorite, and that's why I got into it as a kid. It wasn't like I was, you know, going to all these acting schools. I'm like, oh, my God, my dream is just to act. My dream was just to be in horror movies. It was. And, and um, you know, thankfully, the genre is kind of so loyal that way. I mean, I mean, I also enjoy making comedies. I also enjoy, you know, dramas and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, if horror is in your heart, horror is in your heart. And that's, uh, I would say that, now, we probably don't watch as much as we used to, and it's just really about time. It's like, by the time I'm done with everything for the day, and then, you know, you get small enough people to bed that don't need to be watching, you know, some new version of Demonic Possession, um, or about, like, kids killing their parents, because I'm like, yo, we don't need to fill their head with that. <laughs> Which, speaking of which, you were in Tales of Halloween, and your daughter actually killed you. She did. It was uh, not my finest parenting moments. She uh, <laughs> she slaughtered us, all of these bad bad adults, and uh, she was very good in it. And it was really funny because uh, Adam Girosh and Jace Anderson, who also uh, um, wrote and directed the Night of the Demon sequel, were like, "Oh my God, we write, we made the short. You know, we were going to do the short. Do you want to be in it?" I'm like, "Absolutely, hell yeah." And it was uh, other friends of ours, like Trent Haga and John Beach. And he's like, and we want Mia to be in it and Felissa's daughter, Bianca. And we're like, hell yeah. And uh, it was so funny because they're not actors. Yeah. And so watching them, even though they've grown up on sets, beyond set, it was actually like very, uh, I, I remember like Adam Turmy, he's like, you're like beaming with pride. I'm like, oh, look at her, the way she holds that knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now now, after that, did she decide that she wanted to pursue acting at all? Or she was like, this is my moment. I killed mom. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, she's done a couple little things, but she's more of the, um, 
she's more and I you know what I just realized y'all my mic is not even plugged in can you even hear me oh yeah we can hear you fantastic should I even do anything just leave oh, it no alone. don't touch a damn thing looking at you is even better because you are gorgeous just gorgeous <laughs> okay I know you started your your first film when you were 16 right that must have been just what three or four years ago uh, yes you're correct last year um but yeah it uh I was very, very young when I made my first movie. And so I think uh, like kind of just rewinding back to the, the Mia question, yeah. we've always been very, not like down on the industry, but it's like, if you want to do this, you have to want to do it. Like, because there's nothing easy about it. So I think I, I probably talked her out of any type of passion <laughs> that she had. Yeah. So now it's more like, oh yeah, if somebody's going to offer me a part, I'll take it, but she's not, you know, going to go audition or anything like not that. Not pursuing it, which it's also, I mean, in the family, your husband, um, certainly you, uh, he's directed some of your roles. And, yeah. And tell me, how is it working? I mean, it's a family affair. How is it working with your husband on some of these projects? Uh, he, well, he's an amazing director and he's a great writer, but often when you work together and live together, I, it, it always feels personal. So where like if another director was like, hey, Tiff, you need to do that again this way and hold the bat like this, I would be like, no problem. Let's do it a hundred times. But my husband saying it, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean I didn't do it right? You're the one who didn't do it right. You didn't frame it right. You know? like, there's a, a definite, um, it's, it's husband and wife, right? Like, so you certainly respect sure. each other's art. And then I feel like, in your head but uh, in fairness we've only ever really worked together on like our home project stuff i think if we were on like a tv show together or something it would be different you just have to bite your tongue and then bitch about it <laughs> <at home. laughs> <laughs> well we do have brandon and nicole from scarefest and they're a couple and they run things so yes yes have and then they, them? And then they fight have. later on when they go yeah. home yeah and and no they too, fight they the entire time <laughs> Yes, the entire weekend. <laughs> that's that's how I, all good partnerships work. <laughs> I have I have stories. I, I was telling Cece before I, I called you, Tiffany. I went to a yeah. meeting with them last Saturday, and of the two hour meeting, was it two hours? Like, no, it was long. Yeah, it was four hours. Yeah, it's long enough. It's supposed to have been two hours. It was four. I spent actually about two hours of it just refereeing the two of them. So yeah, that's. Um, uh, Ah oh, no, they're great. Yeah. They're great. They're great. Oh, they're wonderful. I love them both. Like <laughs> brother and sister. But <laughs> I don't talk brother, to my <laughs> brother and sister in the WWE. Um, 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 I okay. Now here, I just leave everybody up on the screen. I have a follow-up question to your panel that you did at Scarefest, uh, because it's something you kind of touched on, and <laughs> terrible way to lead this particular question. Um, okay, now you got into movies at 16 years old. Innocent, young thing, and the movie you were in was not so innocent, I have to say. But because you were 16, I'm quite sure there was. You, you weren't one of the nudies in it. Um, no. That being said, <laughs> that was Tromeo and Juliet, everybody, by the way. the um, But you made a comment in the panel about how your views on on-screen nudity had changed over, had developed over the years, because... I think the exact quote was, oh, I'll never do a nude scene. I would never have said that. Well, it seemed to me that you, you indicated you might have said that years ago. Or maybe you were talking about somebody else because it was Scream Queen panel. Oh, but, no, maybe uh, I said I would have. I originally said I'd never do it. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I oh, meant. And then, things, then certainly things change. And I think that's sort of part of it. It's like part of... You know, you, you get older and you have different views on things or you're less inhibited by things. And at the time, I didn't care. It was very much like bodies are beautiful. You shouldn't be ashamed by them. And Yours especially. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But like, and you, and in my growing up of 80s horror films, it was like 80s horror movies, you know, lots of beautiful women and crazy blood baths and like that that's what I thought was cool so to me it was not an issue at all um you know as I got older and then did more movies I just started to see 
not that like in any of them there was like, oh, a purpose for this nude scene by any means, but just really like, yeah, why? Like what? Like you've already seen me naked. Like what's the difference? Like what's what is this new thing gonna bring to the table for your terrible movie? Um, and so I started just to not be as interested, right? I mean, and I think that's just I don't know just how okay, it is. Okay, so but so your your if evolution. Somebody, if somebody something cool and wanted me to get naked tomorrow, I don't know. Maybe I'd be like, hell yeah. Maybe I'd be like, absolutely not. I mean, just I guess. I'm gonna do the break. commercial break. Uh, I was actually, right now, I was thinking pre-commercial break. Don't get her started uh, during commercial breaks. That's when it all went to shit last time. Just be ready time. when we come back, okay? Yeah. Speaking of commercial break, my wife has... Enough, though, it's the, the stigma now of nudity is so non-existent, where when I, you know, was doing it, it was very much like the taboo, like, oh my gosh, so-and-so, you know, got got naked on film, like, oh, and now it's like... Everyone's body is beautiful and and respected, yeah. and and it's not a big deal. So maybe I was just ahead of my time. Girl powers. I, I somehow <laughs> managed to go straight from youth, right when dad bods came into style. I went straight to granddad bod. So I did. I missed the entire dad bod phase. <laughs> anyway, so everybody. Something, something for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a commercial break. We'll be back with more Tiffany Sheffis. tarot.com Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Yes, tonight is Tiffany Sheppis. And, um, okay, let's see, Mark thing wanted to beat my ass, nudity. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I tell you, go ahead and bring us all, go back to everyone, because this is something CC want to hear about. And I wanted to hear about it a little bit. Now, I, I caught some of your first season of your podcast, um, Friday night. Casualty? What the hell's the name of it? Uh, uh, delete, again, blocking you, <laughs> muting you, deleting you, destroying you. Um, it is called Casualty Friday. Oh, and God. Wesley got the name backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I had to work. If they, now, if the they Google that, it still would have come up. TV, it's not that hard. Do your research on your guests, man. No respect, Wes. No respect. No, no, no. I'm saying if they had Googled that, it would have come up either way. See? Google does it. Anyway, and how's that going? And I think you all only started it because you had so much fun on my show. But Yes, we actually, we we had uh, so much fun on your show. We're like, wow, this is so easy. Anyone can do this. Uh, we God, I hate that the truth. 
Um, so, uh, me, Kane Hodder, and Felissa Rose uh, decided to do a podcast together called Casualty Friday, and it's mostly just us <laughs> talking shit and discussing horror movies, discussing auditions, uh, movies that we've seen. Occasionally, we'll bring on a guest, but we don't we don't really bring them on to interview them. It's more of like just having another person in the room. So, like for instance, like we had our buddy Bill Mosley on, and we're just like, we're going to talk about UFOs. You know, and is there a God? You know, kind of strange, strange uh, horror movie friend topics. And uh, it's going good. I think we are on our uh, going on to our fourth season and people really dig it. And we uh, we put out a contest recently where if people start telling us their cities that they live in. Um, we're going to put all the, the cities into a hat and uh, draw one. And then we're going to do a live show from there. And they can that person can show us around to all their like most famously haunted Awesome. It's be pretty cool. Well, the, the, I guess we just cheated because everybody at Scarefest, we are going on, a, I think, a Friday night late. Now, that's one thing. You have to stay up late Friday night, Tiffany. I hope you can handle that. Because y'all are supposed to be doing that podcast live. Oh, on Friday night. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? No. Um, yes. I know. The reason I said it that way. The reason I said it that way, um, another story from, from the last time she was at Scarefest. I was at the VIP party. Her and Tiffany Rose did not show up until I left. And then everybody, I got to hear stories the next day about how they were the life of the party. Um, and you missed it? <laughs> I missed every damn minute of it. That's amazing. Yeah. that, But that, but yeah, uh, so obviously uh, I, you're a night owl, so I'm, I don't think the scheduling will be a big problem on a, on doing the, no, the live and podcast. We, we love doing our show, so it, it'll be a lot of fun. And it'll actually um, quite – I'm not sure if it's our first live show um, this year, but it, it will definitely be our liveliest. So uh, we're pretty excited. Now, um, actually, though, it was kind of – I don't want to say fortunate. Um, that, that would be a terrible overstatement of the, of the way things went. But you all actually got that started pre-COVID. Um, yeah. And, uh, but then it played, let's face it, if you were going to uh, try to uh, build a podcast, I can't think of a better time to do it than when everybody is locked the hell indoors. Um, no, so all that was just being said. What did Tiffany Sheppis do during quarantine? Uh, we actually made a movie as well. Um, but right at the beginning, uh, mostly because my husband was like, you know, we're going to go crazy because we really locked down very, very hard in this mm -hmm. house. Like, cause my daughter's immune compromised. My mom had cancer. So, and they all live here. And so we're just like, we're not taking any risks. Like we're not going anywhere. Like I bought shit ahead of the time. Like I locked up like walking dead guys. Like I'm not even kidding. It was a little embarrassing. The amount of like weird freezer food I had and like, <laughs> rats. Paper, dog food. I was gonna say, that's where all the toilet paper went. I didn't take the toilet paper though, because I was like, you know what? Like big fucking deal. Like you can use some water on your, like, you know what I mean? Like if you had to, the toilet paper, if you don't have food is where you're screwed. So, uh, we had no shortage of food. Um, <laughs> But uh, my husband was like, we need to do something creative. And so he's like, let's make a movie. And he wrote the script and it was really, really beautiful. And it was very sad. And it was more of a kind of emblem, kind of like, not horror, horror drama really. And uh, about two kids taking care of their mother who's sick upstairs with you don't know what. Um, and you find out later that it's, it's not COVID, it's something else something something sinister right but um he wrote this and i read it and i sobbed and i'm like oh my god this is so good and so beautiful and so sad yes yeah, so let's definitely do it and the kids were really excited but what we didn't realize is because my husband is a filmmaker and a perfectionist that he's all of a sudden amazoning like dolly tracks and jib on <laughs> like that and we're not making like a fun little family movie like i thought we're making a movie movie but just with us and he had full storyboards and a fucking schedule and like, <laughs> and the kids who started out so excited were just <laughs> pissed, you know, after day one, but it, it was coming out so good that we couldn't quit. And then of course we're like, you know, what would be really cool since all of our friends are locked at home too. Like we had a couple like 
you know, voiceover cameos and um, uh, like news reporter people. Like, what if we had them film themselves from home and then we can edit it in? And and they all said yes. So we have Serena Vincent and D. Wallace Stone and Ken Foray and our very own Felissa Rose and Perry Shen. And it, so we have all these people that agreed to do it. And my kids wanted to quit. And I'm like, well, fuck, like, we can't quit now. Everyone said yes. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, we made it and it played like, gosh, like, like 60 festivals throughout quarantine and it played drive-ins what and is the name of this movie it's called day 14. day 14 and it's really good like if you watch it i mean certainly if you pair it up to somebody that had you know a budget for their thing and a crew <laughs> you're gonna be like oh wow it looks homemade but considering we made it with us and our two children and that's it like it's it's pretty it's pretty uh it's pretty cool so I don't know. You guys should watch it. <laughs> well, you must have also been working on Tar around that time because that came out in 2022 as well, correct? Where you're married to? <laughs> That's hilarious. I think Tar. I'm probably not supposed to say this if you get so mad at me, but I think Tar was like made in like 2015. Oh, really? okay. Sorry. <laughs> but it did come out during quarantine, yeah. and it actually had a great release, and it played like all of the drive-ins here in LA, and that there were billboards. Movie. And um, and it was a really fun part, like playing Marigold, like playing, like kind of something. And that's sort of like my thing. It almost goes back to like the nudity thing is like the majority of characters that are going to get naked on screen are, are generally the same. It's like the same sort of thing over and over again. And that just gets boring. Like I want to have something different to do. And like, so like, for instance, the Marigold part, yeah. she's oh. this kind of like hippie chick and she's like really yeah. kind of quirky but like really sweet and yeah. it's different. And, uh, and I loved it. I love playing, playing that part. And that movie was a lot of fun. And, and uh, we got to shoot in Los Angeles, which is very rare um, because it's so expensive to shoot here. But uh, we shot here in LA, like right at the tar pits. And it's, it's fun. It's a fun little monster movie shot forever ago. Yeah, you were fantastic. I mean, you were so different. I didn't even like recognize it was you until I was like, oh my gosh, that's Tiffany. It was funny. Did you see that one, Wes? No. You need to put it on your list. I no, Wes to... doesn't do any research on his guy. No. You know that. I like it. Probably because you weren't naked in that one. Oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> And that's why he doesn't know about Casualty Friday because it's all listening. Like, he can't do that. It needs to be yeah. visual. Oh, well, no, it's, yes. yeah, well, that's, but if I. Well, that if I use my imagination, it just gets ugly at that point. Because well, at least you have Kane Hodder to think about. That. <laughs> I. <laughs> anyway, um, by the way, I watched the first season of your podcast and I liked it, but I, I'm done now. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, Watch, <laughs> watching that podcast, Grandpa. Oh <laughs> uh, well. What is here? Okay, here a little technical talk. What yeah. is the proper terminology, as far as you're concerned, for what we do? What you what, do? No, I mean, you're on video and you're talking. I mean, base internet broadcasting. What? What, oh, pre, I mean, what I term do you prefer? It's a it's a streaming television show. Okay. Now, when somebody asks you about the uh, casualty Fridays. And, well, uh, for instance, to be honest, I actually owe you an apology, and this is the first and last time it's ever going to happen, because <laughs> I forgot that we actually had the video component to Casualty Friday at first. Oh, I'm so sorry. We, So you are correct. You are correct, and I apologize, but that's it. Um, but because we don't, <laughs> have, we don't have the video component anymore, we just do the podcast, because oh. what we realized was we were really splitting an audience where you think that you're getting both you're actually not like you, you are dividing and we want all of our traffic to go to one place. And to us, the podcast side was better than what we were putting out there in our, you know, crappy. See, I singular. agree with you about the splitting thing, except that we found that our numbers for the video, as far as a live version, of course we do live. You, you, you record okay. because that's what other people do. But as far as the live version, our numbers went up so high when we went to doing video versus live. Now, replays, I couldn't take. I don't even keep track of the podcast, the audio-only numbers. But as far as um, the, the video numbers, you know, that that's why I'm, I'm here. That's why I make the big bucks, you might say. Uh, 
that's why that's, he grooms that beard. That's yeah. right. All, I, all the I, drinks I, are on Wes in uh, Kentucky. Did Did you know? Absolutely. Cece, did Absolutely. you notice that I actually trimmed my beard for her, and I got this weird. I have this weird thing going on with my beard. You know, it was it's getting grayer and grayer, and I trimmed the gray out tonight, and I have these black spots like I've been using just for men from the inside out. So I don't. It looks so good. You never trim for me, Wes. <laughs> you need to block him, Cece. I, I was. Know. Well, I actually weird. thought Tiffany was going to wear something more like what she wore last time she was on the show, and here she. I I have this effect what on women. What did I wear? Something really hot. I remember it was low cut and hot. I just remember that much because that's all my brain could handle. <laughs> yeah, and here I'm like, I, I only want to be like a floating head in this thing. Like, <laughs> like hey, yeah. there, there's like some shoulder. I mean, there you like, go. Oh, there you go. Oh, see, 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 well, see the, the ratings bump 10 points. The ratings bump 10 points. Everybody, okay, we got commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to do our announcements. Um, and then we'll be back with Tiffany. We're going to find out what she's doing now in the real world. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. Links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Okay. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. And we're going to do our announcements now. We're going to start the lineup with our celebrity announcement of the night. Sean Whalen, despite him coming on the show and me telling you point blank that, and him also, that Sean Whalen was not coming to Scarefest this year, guess what? <laughs> Sean Whalen. See, that's why all you people that bitch in the group about who's not coming, you never know. You never know. But Sean Whalen. Sean Whalen yeah. is great. He he's is. a nice guy. Fans love him. He's done cool movies. Like, he's a great guest. Absolutely. And I think he was at Scarefest the last time I was there. He, he, we, we have him every two to three years. <laughs> every time. Yeah, he met his wife. <laughs> he met his wife at Scarefest. I mean, that's, that's how right. great. What? We, yes. Yes. Now, our next celebrity quote unquote announcement, though Tony Moran is Aww. canceled from Scarefest. Here's a statement from our management We love horror movies and their fans. And we want to offer guests that also love horror movies and their fans. Enough said. Ah, uh, uh, that sucks. That's lame. But well, I and they might do it. <laughs> we were. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, if anybody has any questions, Google Tony Moran. Um, what was it you found all them under? Oh. Tony Moran. I forget. Fan bashing. Yeah. Yeah, do do that. Do that. Just do that. Okay, anyway. Uh, of course, tickets are on sale. You can come and see Tiffany Sheppes at The Scarefest. Go to thescarefest.com. Tickets are on sale now. Um, throw axes with serial killers. Now, everybody, these special celebrity events that we're planning will start with the throw axes with killers. Yeah, you're going in. You're competing with axe throwing. But that being said, I don't think too many conventions are going to offer to lock you in a building for two hours with one of your favorite horror celebrities. I mean, this is up close personal time with your with with your favorite celebrities. Get these tickets. Um, there's going to be like I think seventy some total for sale if we if we fill out the card. That is not that many fans out of fifteen thousand that we expect on the floor uh, standing in line for Tiffany's autograph. Now, I don't have a pretty graphic for it, but I'm going to mention that uh, Scream Queen Bowling should go on sale in the next 7 to 10 days. We've got our numbers. We know how many tickets we can Wait sell. Wait a second. How do we have uh, axe throwing with a bunch of dudes, but we don't have the Scream Queen Bowling art? 
because I, 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 I am not happy with this, guys. Not because contracts happy. have not been signed, Tiffany. Tell them, Tiffany. Come, come on. Like, you, it is the easiest graphic in the world. Sorority babes in the slime ball bowl around me. You just got to throw some different faces on everybody I, else. <laughs> I will find it on my computer and I will. I'm not going to take time out of the show to do that. Anyway, we have a graphic. It only has uh, Linnea Quigley's picture on it yet. Because Good. She's awesome. Yeah. And then it's her, her, and, her and Felissa's doing it. So there, everybody. Tickets will be on sale. Now that you took all the fun out of it, mm -hmm. Tiffany. I thought you I was doing a great service to this woman. I thought I was doing this woman a great service, pushing something that's not even on sale yet. And then she comes after me. I love yeah, you, by the way. How are you going to tell somebody about something that is not available? Because I mean, it's a tease. That's a broadcaster yeah. term. Us yeah. professional podcasters use that term. It's a tease. Anyway, Central Kentucky Mystical Market to move on. That's coming up next weekend. <laughs> next weekend, Central Kentucky Mystical Market at the um, uh, uh, um, Clarion Hotel on Newtown Pike. Uh, mystics, readers, uh, lots of vendors, local artisans. Uh, come by there. It'll be Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. I might not be there this time, but if I'm not, my lovely wife Anita will be. Hawking Scarefest wears the um, the speaker applications last week to get your speaker applications in. We've just about filled our time allotment. I think there might be a few slots next. What is that? What speakers? That's people that yeah. stand up and speak. Speak about what? Whatever the hell they want. Well, I mean, whatever the what? hell they. Want. They talk that's about how to do things. Easy? You've never been to a seminar. Oh, we have some great seminars at Scarefest. People will talk about serial killers and crime and UFOs and psychics, all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. Oh, so I got like like just convention talkers. Yeah, we use the word speakers <laughs> because talkers <laughs> sounds talkers. sounds rather dumbed down even for for um, for me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to fill out a convention talker application well, and I'm going to do a whole seminar uh -huh. on hate for Wes. And uh, hey, it's going to be grand. Uh, we'll, we'll have that one in the bar next door. There we go. Anyway, uh, Lex Live. Lex Live uh, is. Why did I look at Lex Live? That's where we're showing the films. The film festival entries are open. Uh, it'll be open through the 1st of October. You got time to get them in. We are short on feature length films this year, believe it or not. Everybody apparently during COVID only had the budget and time to film shorts. We've got a bazillion short movies, but if uh, the feature films, we're we're not full by any means. So yeah, you are you've got plenty of time. Get them in. Uh, go to thescarefest.com, click the link, or filmfreeway.com slash the scarefest. Finally, Scarefest gift shop, scarefestradio.com. We got hats, we got shirts, and um, I thought you had to leave. No, that's next 10 minutes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because Tiffany did a whole movie day 14. Actually, it's a short. <laughs> but it's a long short. It's like 24 minutes. So that, that is, I think we we, have, we call that a medium length short. Yeah, we do 15 minutes for shorts. And yeah. up to up to thirty minutes uh, is a medium length, and then yeah, then features features above that. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here. CC, you can take if you got anything else to ask her. Uh, what? Okay, here. Okay, now I remember where we were going next. Here we go. Um, <laughs> well, CC, you ask about this too. Show. <laughs> we have personality. I, I, have I, you I, been I, on I, any I, other I, like I, it? Yeah. Have you been on any other like it? Yes, yours uh, last year, same time, <laughs> same place. Um, the point being, we're unique. Anyway, I was going to let you plug all. What are you doing now, baby? Um, conventions, uh, movie? Are you? Have you made the transition? Have you started filming new stuff? Um, no, I haven't filmed anything new in, in new post COVID time, but like we, like I said before, like took it really seriously. And so just sort of kind of getting back into regular life. Um, but you I have done you're doing some voiceovers, tons of voiceover stuff. And like we have, we did a album for Brendan Haley, which is called eerie earfuls. 
and uh, that we should be dropping some news about when it'll be out, but it'll definitely be available for all your Halloween parties. And there's so many great voice people in it and a lot of people that you know from other horror movies and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And um, we had Death December finally come out during quarantine, which was really cool. Um, and uh, my my other super homeboy, Michael Verratti, wrote and directed that. And uh, we're working on a bunch of things together. And then Casualty Friday. Casualty Friday is still happening. We still record continues and um we're doing some live shows we are going to be at a couple other conventions together before uh scarefest but scarefest is is one we are very very excited about and um i'm going to uh the pa horror con and sinister con in miami and obviously scarefest um horror realm and i don't know a bunch of others that i think i'm forgetting but uh yeah i'm just i'm really i'm excited that we can finally safely see people again and and uh do things and be around each other and go back to conventions and make movies and tiffany it sounds like you really enjoy cons and seeing your fans i love cons cons are great i mean it's like i don't know felissa and i actually just talked about this yesterday on our podcast but that it it in many ways you know, some of the people you only see at conventions, it is seeing your family, right? It's like seeing cousins that you haven't seen in a long time or even people you don't like, but you're like, oh yeah, that guy's at that show, you know? But, um, you know, and just being in cool different cities is is always a good time. And like, I often try to bring, you know, somebody from my family, like whether it be one of the kids or my husband with me to, to uh, see everybody. And it's just, it's like one big family party reunion. Very nice. And do you have any other projects coming up that maybe uh, you are going to do again with your husband after you've had such success with him in the past? Um, we just started talking about putting something together, but it would be more of a live show kind of deal. So um, very preliminary on it, as in like just talked about it last night. <laughs> so. <laughs> And now um, as we're doing our live show, you guys can rediscuss things that you might want to do or not do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so uh, hopefully what? by by Scarefest, I'll have more news on that for you guys. And, Wonderful. And uh, just staying, staying busy, man. Good to hear. Good to hear. And uh, and uh, just absolutely everybody. What can I? What can I say? Although I've, I've, I've kind of thought she coasted through Victor Crawley a little bit, but other than that, her career has been phenomenal. I coasted through Victor. <laughs> you Crowley. laid around. You laid down the entire movie. I did, and that was not my fault. That was my <laughs> terrible, terrible co-star's fault, who didn't want to save me, and that's all I'm going to say. It was terrible co-star. Did it? You know. <laughs> now this is how I watch movies. Okay. I was watching that, and I'm thinking, you know, why didn't somebody just, like, I, there was a private jet. I'm sure it had a bathroom. Somebody grab her the toilet paper roll. I, we, I, trust me, I ran it by all of them. The little straws from the airplane, the oxygen tubes that are hanging right above. We've all thought about it. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, it was cool. It was so fun to do. Like, everybody digs Adam Green. Lo people love the Hatchet franchise. Like, and for years, like, I knew everybody that was in those movies. So it's one of those, like, what the heck? Like, when am I going to be in one? And, um, and there you are. So when we finally got a chance to do it and, and it was, like, all of us friends, it was it was a good time. And then and, and the chemistry was great on it. It was it, – it's one that I had not watched last time you were on the show. And you said you've got to watch that one. And I have to say, it, it much better than the Trash Bag Monster. The trash bag monster. Oh, you mean Felissa's starring role? <laughs> I believe you were in the car with her for all of fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, everybody. Um, okay, uh, we're going to take our final commercial break. Tiffany, thank you so much for coming on this show, and I am looking so forward to uh, to letting you harass me in person. Uh, thank you, Tiffany. See you at Scarefest. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see everybody at Scarefest. Horror. Movies. Fans. Four. 
life. On Facebook, find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis with another review. Joe Lewis and Bonehead Weekly. Hey, I got out to the movies this week. Can you believe it? I really did. And I went to the movie theater and I had a date. I All I had to do was promise him that I would buy him, a, you know, a movie ticket and some popcorn and maybe a, well, you know the rest. I can't tell you who it was, but his initials are Brandon Griffith. I went to see a movie called The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. That's what I've been saying about this show for years, you know doing these things for Wes. The devil made me do it because Wes is old scratch himself. Is it any good? So here's a little backstory for you. The Conjuring films, the first two are directed by James Wan. He made the in, first two Insidious films. Anyway, he directed the first two of <clears throat> the Conjuring films. The first one I really enjoy. It's a fine film. And the second one's okay. It takes place in Britain. So I was actually kind of excited to go to the theater and see this one. There's just one problem. This one's not directed by James Wan. It's directed by Michael Chavis, uh, Chavis, and he directed The Curse of the La Llorona. I already reviewed that. It, it's kind of one of these Conjuring verse movies like Annabelle and all the other ones. I didn't like it. I didn't care for this one either. Now, let's get something straight. If you're into all this, the Warrens, they're fascinating people on tape, on screen, but most of this is BS. It was, this is based loosely loosely on a true story in the sense of there was this little boy who was possessed they say and the warrens came in as they do with their media blitz google this stuff try to save him bring in some priests and that they say that the that the demon left the little boy and went into this this man and a few months later this or a few weeks later however how long killed uh, his uh, landlord and hits this is the first as we know case of them actually trying to in a court of law say the devil made me do it defense that was demonic possession now the judge threw out by the way the movie doesn't explain this as well i judge said that you can't actually do that as a defense he kind of threw it out but i'll be damned if it didn't get him only manslaughter uh, and he only served about five years of this 10 to 20 year sentence that's it he only served five years that is true i'm okay when movies are loosely based movies are almost always loosely based on something like there's a whole subplot with a witch here pretty sure none of that came out in any of these documentaries about this i enjoy the first two conjuring films love the first one this one to me i almost fell asleep now brandon was watching it and brandon had a good time with it so I can't recommend it 
but he can recommend it. He liked it. And I think if you're into possession, which I know some of you are, you're, you're hoping to get possessed by Satan any day. If you're into something like that, then this is a movie for you. It's well-made. It's not cheap looking. It's got good acting, the running, but it's got good acting. Just can't recommend it. I, I just thought it was boring. I almost fell asleep. I mean, if Brandon hadn't been holding my hand, I mean, I almost fell asleep. Go out and see The Devil That Made Me Do It, The Conjuring 3. If you're really into The Conjuring and the whole universe with Annabelle, Annabelle 2, Annabelle kills Chucky, Annabelle and Chucky have a baby. If you're not really into it and you think the Warrens are BS, probably skip out on this one. I actually would have liked to have seen a movie more in tow with the actual story. I think that would have been interesting because I find the trial... And the fact that this guy is trying to bullshit people to say he was possessed by Satan. That's the reason why I murdered somebody. I find that fascinating. The movie, not so much. So not going to support you going out and seeing The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. But once again, if you like this kind of thing, it's not bad. It's just not my cup of tea. This has been Joe Lewis, Bonehead Weekly. And welcome back, everybody, to the last few minutes of Scarefest TV. Uh, our guest, um, of course, Tiffany, I had to leave during the last, because she was actually, had, she did that so graciously, she actually had something else to do tonight that said, I will do your show. And it worked out, because last time she came on, it took us like 20 minutes to even get her online, because I could either hear her or see her that night. Well, she and, obviously has a huge crush on you, Wes, because yes, she I, just <laughs> kept giving you a hard time. That, um, yep, that's, um, I have a way with women. They, they, that, what can I tell you? They, they love to hate me. Um, I'm serious about these marks under my beard. It's really, it's annoying. I think it looks so handsome. I'm, uh, what well, I'm getting, getting ready probably to go start goatee because it is hot. I, uh, today I spent my, my work day before I went to work for Scarefest all afternoon. I went out and we fixed fence and in this Ooh. heat and that was it was ugly um i'm trying to think what all we've talked about at the scare face the scare face meetings everybody are starting to roll oh by the, i know what i need to tell everybody and also once again i should have had a really cool graphic to go with it okay everybody knows we've got our vendor sales open okay we ran out we are we're almost out of table? artist tables artist Ooh. tables we have plenty of vendor space see that's the thing everybody okay we, the vendor space, we had planned on having COVID restrictions. So we rented the whole damn place. Then they said, oh, it's June 11th. You can get all the people in there that you want. Okay, great, except now we've got more floor space than we've ever had. So we were not likely to run out of vendor booths. We wish we would, don't get me wrong, but so, um, but we did, we only allocate so much space to artist tables. I don't know if they've uploaded it yet, to the change to the floor plan, but we are adding artist tables. So if you uh, have something art that you make, basically the rules are you have to either make it with your hand or uh, we also let uh, authors get those tables. And um, so uh, there, if, if you've been worried about getting booth space uh because it was tight don't worry about it we've opened up more space on the small tables and we still have plenty of the um of the uh, full 10 by 10 pipe and drape um available and we honestly now a little but get side note <coughs> well yeah i mean i should be i'm too honest that's why people like me uh the truth of the matter is that that's um <laughs> the truth of the matter is uh there are we know there are a lot of conventions coming up and people are really watching how they allocate their dollars. Now I don't think you're going to get a whole lot more bang for your buck than you find at Scarefest because there's not that many conventions our size appealing to this particular marketplace, i.e. horror and paranormal. Yeah, you'll have a comic con. They'll have a couple horror stars, a few paranormal stars will show up, but we cater to both and so we have a loyal fan base of both and 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 psychics we have psychics we have psychics nobody <laughs> wizard world i bet they don't have psychics i have no idea anyway so uh, special messages 
message about vendor tables right now. <laughs> yeah, for all the psychics out there wanting a table. <laughs> um, now, that that was one thing I did. Yeah, I wanted to point out. We're trying to get some more of the photo ops. We're starting to put those together. Well, I'd, I'll, I'd say you'll see photo ops within the next seven to ten days because we've got our lineup kind of gelling, if you will. In other words, we're not done. Quit saying we're done. We're not done announcing. I had this fight the other night because now that everything's on, they got everything has to go through budget now. Well, every, every time I think you're done, there's a new announcement. So no, this is so exciting. There's always another announcement. That you should have been around here, Scarefest nine, I think it was. I don't. It wasn't ten. I think it was nine. They were announcing people, and I mean, the last three weeks. But that particular year, what it was, the story went that it just so happened a bunch of people didn't have anything to do that weekend, and they called up and said, "Hey, if you'll give me a table, and you know." I'll come. No guarantee, you know, in the words. Do you want me? Yeah. <laughs> we, we we got a bunch of cheap guests that year. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but they, I mean, but it was good. It was one of our best. It was a really good paranormal lineup that year. And I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the horror people that year. But this year, um, we've still got a lot of announcing to do. We are still in negotiations or it's not even negotiations at this point. It's phone tag. And, uh, and like, Got one agent I'm working with that has trouble signing PDF documents. So I said, I would hey, think that print with, them and know, take pictures. With all these COVID restrictions, you may find yourself in that kind of situation again this year where people are like, you know what? I was on lockdown. I was on quarantine. I can be out now. What's Scarefest doing? I'd say, I think crowd wise, you're absolutely 100%. I think yeah. we're going to have, if not a record crowd, we're going to push it. I think Huge. we will. Um, the but at the same time gonna be really really big really really what really really big yeah yeah okay nice accent anyway uh, the but i we we are there are vendors tend to be regional and we are i guess you say you know fighting with no that's not the right word because most of us don't even know each other exist but the, you know, vendor, vendors do only have so much money to spend on hotels, and and uh, so. Uh, but uh, but the like I said, point is, we're trying to help out. We put out some more yes. low cost tables so that we can get you in the scare fest and appeal to our crowd, which are some of the greatest fans in the United States of Ever. America. If you haven't gotten your hotel room, book your hotel room now. Yes, selling out. Yes, and she doesn't mean our host hotels. Lexington is yeah. selling out because Lexington, the city. Yeah, because we got the big concert that weekend with some country music star that I couldn't pick out of the police lineup, and uh, Keeneland's going on. So, so yeah, uh, you want to? And if you, and if you can't say Lexington, I don't know Winchester, a whole bunch of hotels in Georgetown, Kentucky, 15, 20 minute drive, still not a big deal, FYI, and. Uh, that's about all I got, everybody. Uh, but once again, if you missed the announcement, Sean Whalen, Sean Whalen of People Under the Stairs and Twister, and a bunch of other movies. <laughs> He's another He's one. He's busy Six, right now. 60 seconds. John Whalen. Wow. And he met his wife at Scarefest. Yes, what it's a, a l- it's a lovely, him. lovely story. He didn't he didn't start dating her at Scarefest. Didn't ask her out. But yes, he actually he told he thought she was he told I'm pretty I don't know if he told it during the commercial break or if he told it on live on air but go back watch the episode with Sean Whalen from this year yeah. but he told the story and then told us a little bit more of the story maybe anyway yeah he met her at Scarefest was she a fan was she a guest was she, she was no she was a fan she fan just girl? yeah fan girl <laughs> wow just, uh, and uh we might have to renew vows or something Oh, that would be so great. We're hoping he would do it at Scarefest. We're hoping. Yeah, he actually see, wanted to get married at Scarefest. Yeah. But she's As he but, but, but but I believe she said fuck no. <laughs> well they, they didn't want to wait. Oh yeah, that's what it was. They, they didn't, didn't want to wait. I don't, I don't think she wanted to do it in front of fifteen thousand people either. <laughs> but that being said, um yeah, the uh but uh yeah. Uh Sean Whalen uh uh is coming and he met his wife at Scarefest. I asked her out at another convention, but he met her at Scarefest, and that's what's important. 
And uh, so everybody, we'll see you next week. So there is a chance. There's always a chance. <laughs> Good night, everybody.